let the earth rejoice. Good morning and welcome to the parish of St Andrew's Horn Church for this service of morning worship. It's lovely to be joined by people listening on the phone, watching on a screen and sitting with us in church. Thank you to everyone who's made this service possible. Pete and Harriet are having a well-earned break this week, so we don't have the normal live stream set up. And this does mean that uh, you won't get any words up on the screen. So we'll be doing the service slightly differently. And a particular thanks to Ken and Marlene who are making this all join up and work. So thank you also to you here in church because once again you've sat very obediently behind your little arrows. Uh, please do stay in your assigned seat and wait at the end of the service for someone to show you the way out. If you have a problem during the service, just try and catch someone's attention and we'll help you. So let's now take a few moments to focus our thoughts on God, to let go of what's distracting us and to welcome God's Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us together this morning. Please bless our time set aside for you. Help us to hear you speaking and give us wisdom and courage to act on what we hear. Amen. The next part of our service is that time of confession because it's always good to spend time reflecting on how we're doing in our relationship with this world. So we're going to take some time to be open with God about our relationships with family, with friends, with neighbours and with the natural world and how we treat that. And of course our relationship with God. We're going to say sorry to God and ask his forgiveness because we all know that there are things that haven't really been very good. So I'm going to invite you now to spend a short time with me in silence as we look back at those things and bring them to God. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And we'll continue in prayer with the Church's prayer for today, which is the Collect for the Twelfth Sunday after Trinity. God of constant mercy, who sent your Son to save us, remind us of your goodness, increase your grace within us, that our thankfulness may grow, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Romans. And we're reading in chapter 12, 
from verse 9 to the end. And it's called Love in Action. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I shall hand over to Carol. Our second reading this morning is from St Matthew, chapter 16, beginning at verse 21. Matthew 16, from verse 21. This follows on from last week's reading, where Jesus had asked his disciples who they said he was. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, chief priests and teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Out of my sight, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world and yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. Now I'm telling you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you for your word and ask that you will guide us as we think about it together this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. 
If you're watching television and it's not a BBC programme, what's the annoying thing? It's the adverts, isn't it? Even if meerkats are sometimes more entertaining than what they interrupt. But advertising is designed to tap into the selfish within us. Make sure you get the most, you look amazing, you feel great, and we can give it to you. And it's nothing new. Though ours comes over the television, the internet, or in the post, there would have been plenty of people in Jesus and Paul's day, in the markets, on the streets, urging passers-by to purchase. And what would Paul have made of some of our adverts today? Like all those trying to lure people into online gaming, all those giving the implication that a certain phone or type of car or brand of clothing defines you as a person. I don't think Paul would have been impressed. Might he even have used the word evil? In the passage we heard from Romans, he's very hot on the contrast between good and evil. But evil is an uncomfy word. If we're told we've done something evil, we probably feel that's a bit strong. It's reserved for people like murderers or cruel dictators. But if you put a D in front of evil, it becomes devil, the source of all that's opposed to God. Evil is a reality, and Paul tells us to hate it. And there's another strong word, and he tells us to make sure we're not overcome by it because evil is incompatible with the love of God and the life that Jesus has given and called us to. Because if, if you don't believe in God and ignore Jesus and have no concept of his kingdom, then it's logical to make choices as if this life, number one, is all that there is. And living means just getting as much out of it as you can. But even as Christians, we can be lured into that path, one which leads to the things that Paul warns against here. Things like harbouring resentment, nursing jealousies, seeking to get our own back, one-upmanship. And when we do, then we get enmeshed in evil, which consumes and destroys. And it can be so easy. Perhaps I feel hurt or damaged by something that someone has said or done. I go over it in my mind, my possible responses, justifying myself and my feelings. It keeps me awake. So I decide, right, I will stop thinking about it. Only to find five minutes later, I'm having the same thoughts. What I wish I'd said or done, what I want to say or do, to come out on top or feel vindicated. In short, I'm getting sucked into a cycle. Negative attitudes grow when we leave God out of the picture. And sometimes the biggest temptations to leave him out come from very close to home, from those who want to protect us. Which brings us to Jesus and Peter in the Gospel passage. In last Sunday's reading, Peter made a great proclamation of faith in Jesus and was called the rock on which the church would be built. And Ken told us about that last week. But almost immediately, things go wrong. Because this morning, as we heard Jesus tell his disciples for the first time that he was going to be killed and rise again, well, for Peter, this doesn't fit with what a Messiah should do. Oh, no way, Jesus, that's not going to happen to you. And Jesus' response is savage, really. Out of my sight, Satan. So why? And why such strong language? What well, may be, what Peter suggested, is so terribly tempting to Jesus. It's a bit like being back at that time in the wilderness when Satan urged him to take the easy route of power and fame and self-indulgence. For Jesus, 
Peter the Rock has turned into a potentially lethal stumbling block to trip over. But Jesus' choice was to allow evil to do its worst and thereby reveal the limits of evil's power. To go through death, which would not crush God's kingdom, because evil and death were defeated in resurrection. And then he tells us to take up our cross and follow him. Because what good is it to gain the whole world, but lose your soul, your life? And indeed, how many celebrities seem to have gained the whole world, but completely messed up their lives? I have to say, a, a well-known couple in a recent court case over this summer comes to my mind. But carrying a cross doesn't sound very attractive, does it? So what does it mean for us? Well, I think Paul helps us here. Having written 11 chapters of theology, Romans chapter 12 shifts from theological to practical advice. And today, as we follow on from last Sunday's reading, if you remember last Sunday, we heard Paul telling us to be living sacrifices. And the big problem with a living sacrifice is that it keeps crawling off the altar. So Paul gives us today the advice about how to get up and get back on by going on the offensive in love. Love is an act of will which chooses the way of God and therefore helps us and others to become better people because it comes out of our relationship with God. So although Paul gives four negative imperatives, don't curse, don't repay evil for evil, don't take revenge, don't be overcome by evil, although he gives those four negative imperatives, the way to defeat them is by overcoming evil with good. And so he tells us to bless and forgive, which will free us from the load of bitterness. Now, forgiveness is not going soft on evil. It's not saying that it isn't real or it isn't painful. It's not saying that it doesn't matter, because it does. But when we take the decision to forgive and to deliberately rid ourselves from the desire for revenge, then we are taking responsibility for our own mental, emotional, and spiritual health. We are refusing to allow our future lives to be determined by the evil that someone else has done. <laughs> Whatever it was, it's bad enough that they did it. Should they have the right to keep us in a bitter and twisted state? No, they shouldn't. And we will return to the theme of forgiveness in a couple of weeks' time when we hear some of Jesus' words on that very same subject. We entrust our lives to God. So can we trust him to vindicate us and help us to take the initiative in positive peacemaking? To take a stand against the destructive impact of hatred greed and oppression, because that's how the life-changing love and power of God flow through us to change the world. As Christians, we are called to share in other people's sufferings and joys, not to stand apart from them, but to allow ourselves to be involved. And that means being vulnerable. And Paul calls us to practice hospitality. That doesn't mean spring clean the house, look up Mary Berry's book and make sure you have a good bottle of wine in. But hospitality literally means a love of strangers, focusing on someone else's needs. And it can be done anywhere, in the supermarket, along the street, over the phone. Opening up our time, concentration and attention. Of course, none of this is easy. Taking up our cross and loving has to be worked at over and over again. 
And we can't do it on our own. Which is why Paul spent 11 chapters on theology before he got to this one. We can only do it because Jesus went there first and chose the cross as his way. We can only do it in the power of the Holy Spirit by picking up our own cross and following him daily. We can only do it by keeping getting back on the altar when we fall off. As I said before, that's what a saint is. Not a person who never falls and never fails, but someone who always gets up, gets back again, and retakes the hand of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Carol. We now come to the part of the service where we say what we believe. All around the world, Christians make similar statements. And because we don't have the words on the screen today, I'm going to ask you a series of questions. If you agree with what I ask, please can you reply, we believe and trust in God. So let us declare our faith in God. Do you believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named? We believe and trust in God. Do you believe in God the Son, the risen Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love? We believe and trust in God. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high? We believe and trust in God. Do you believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit? We believe and trust in God. Jane is now going to lead us in our prayers of intercession. Let us pray, and in answer to, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us prayer as a means of active communication with you about the part you want each of us to take in fulfilling your purpose on earth. Help us now to be still, pray in faith, and be directed by you to take up our cross. We thank you that through technology and those skilled in its use, we can gather together as a church family to pray and to praise you. And we ask for your blessing on all who pray with us via computer or telephone, now and later in the week. Make us an active community of faithful witnesses to your love. Forgive us when, like Peter, we get things wrong or when we allow negative worldly views to influence the choices we make and help us to become better listeners to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our broken world and for all those in positions of leadership, in government, in the church and in civic life who have to take decisions which impact on the lives of many. We pray for our government as they take action to combat the virus and help us as a country to follow the advice to keep each other safe without complaining. Guide our ministers, Lord, in their responsibilities of choice 
that they may govern wisely, not for personal gain or status, but for justice, equality, and the common good. We pray for all who are facing the consequences of major disasters, those who've lost family, homes, and livelihoods in the Beirut explosion and in Hurricane Laura in Louisiana. Be with everyone having to make those choices on the best way to help, support, and rebuild these communities, knowing the potential loss of life and damage which wrong choices can bring. And we pray for the American people as they prepare to make important choices amidst negative claims and counterclaims and actions driven by prejudice which divide instead of unite their country. We pray for Jacob Blake and those injured in the Wisconsin protests. And as we look back in the anniversary week of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech, we ask you to protect those who fight for equal rights for all, no matter what their race or creed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for our town, its businesses and amenities, and the ways in which we are adapting to new routines. We praise you for the new initiatives and opportunities to support each other, which have grown out of the pandemic, and the increased awareness of our neighbours and their needs. We give thanks for all the new ways of worshipping you being developed within your church and the increased inclusivity this brings to our parish. And this morning, we pray particularly for Ken, Marlene and Seth as Ken prepares for his long-awaited installation on Tuesday. Lord, we ask you to bless him in his new role as he officially takes full responsibility for our parish, as we have been blessed with his previous ministry. Strengthen, sustain, and guide him. And grant him wisdom that as he makes decisions for the spiritual growth of your church, here in Hornchurch, all activities will be blessed. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Loving Lord, we pray for our young people, our future church. We praise you for all their groups and the leaders who've worked so tirelessly to keep activities going throughout lockdown in the summer, to maintain connections with each other and with their church family. We thank you for everybody who took part in the virtual safari and the Summer Messy Church project, which will celebrate its final session this week. And as they resume their studies, we pray for them, Lord. We pray for the school governors and all who are making decisions about the return to school over the next week. We ask for your protection upon them, all teachers, lecturers, teaching assistants, support staff, all those involved in education who are busy preparing a safe environment in which they can learn. We ask that all students may adapt to new settings and regulations, once again able to socialise and have fellowship with friends. Help those starting a new school or college for whom there are very many questions and uncertainty. To settle confidently Help those whose future was confused by exam results and moving to college, university or apprenticeship, pray that they may now be able to make the right decisions which can fulfil your purpose for them. And we ask you to be with all who have left college and are seeking work in this uncertain climate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, please be with those people for whom life is a difficult challenge at the moment. Those suffering anxiety and loneliness, 
those without a safe, happy home life, those whose jobs are at risk. Help us to recognise the opportunities you give us to support them and reflect your love so that they may discover and recognise that they are special to you and that you accept all who turn to you. We ask for your healing upon all who are sick in mind, body or spirit. And this morning we remember before you all health workers in the various settings who are dedicating themselves to the healing and support of the sick. And in a moment of silence, we hold up to you those we know personally who need your healing grace today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we bring to you those whose lives have been changed and hearts saddened by the death of someone dear to them. We ask you to be with all who mourn, Lord. Make them aware of your presence and grant them your peace and strengthen the knowledge that Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light which no darkness can quench. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue in prayer by joining in the words that Jesus himself taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We now come to the notices. You might want to get comfortable, because there's a few extras today. Uh, Congratulations to anybody who is celebrating something today. Any, want, anybody want to volunteer anything? I will check on Facebook later to see, uh, see what's going on, but have a wonderful celebration. And as we talk about celebrations, I have the great privilege to read some bands of marriage. Make sure I get this right. So I publish the bands of marriage between James Henry Chapman of this parish and Jeanette Ann Hill, also of this parish. This is the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry, Sorry, where well, they may not marry each other, you are to declare it. Good. So, shall we pray for. I've forgotten their names already, I'm very sorry. For James and Jeanette. Lord, please be with James and Jeanette and all couples as they prepare for their marriage. May they know your blessing and your strength. Help them to feel your love strengthening theirs and grant them joy on their wedding day and in the future they will share together. In Jesus' name, Amen. So, 
So, uh, as Jane mentioned in her prayers uh, on Tuesday, Ken is finally going to be installed officially as our new vicar. Hooray! <laughs> available online in the usual way. Um, because there are a number of people who have to be here physically, because it's a very formal occasion governed by church law, I'm sorry that attendance actually is by invitation only for a very small number of people in these COVID times. So you'll be able to see everything and if you're watching from home, you won't have a pillar in your way. You'll have a nice comfy seat and we can all pray for Ken wherever we are. The church will be open as usual for private prayer on Thursday. Uh, we're starting at 10 a.m. This Thursday we're going to finish a little bit early at half past one. And this is because we have a wedding that afternoon and we need to get the church ready for that. So. This Thursday, 10 a.m. to 1.30, if you wish to come for private prayer. Next Sunday, we'll be back here again for a Holy Communion at 10.15. Again, here and online. So I, I moved all things round in the order in which I'm saying them, and now I've got confused. Um, right, Jane also prayed about Messy Church, which has had a wonderful celebration of creation over the summer. You may have noticed, if you've had a wander around the churchyard, there's some very pretty painted stones in, sort of, over there-ish. If you feel artistic and you would like to celebrate God's creation by painting your own stone, feel free to go around the corner after the service or later in the week and pick up a stone. There's now some em blank, blank stone, should we say? Is that the right word? There's now some stones that haven't been painted. Pick one up, take it home, paint it, and bring it back so that we can join the whole parish together in painting a stone to celebrate God's creation. Uh, what else should we say? Uh, as you know, parish office is still working, thanks to Jackie and Arling for keeping us going. If you need to reach them, please call them or email them using the details on the website. If you have something you would like prayer, people to pray for, please reach out to the pastoral care team. Again, their number is on the website. Uh, you do have to leave a message, but they will call you back. Okay, what else is happening today? We have family time as usual. Uh, that will be at 11 o'clock-ish. Ken is making strange hand gestures uh, at the back. Um, and that's always fun. I don't know what he's going to do this week. He doesn't either. Um, so we'll look forward to that. And also, if you fancy having a chat with people who aren't here in the church today, go home and join in with the coffee and chat, which will be on Zoom as usual from about 11 o'clock. And you can find the link on the events page, or the events section of the Parish of Horn Church Facebook page. Now you may remember we've had um, a produce stall at the Lich Gate. Uh, I have a note here to say thank you very much for everyone who supported or contributed to that stall, which we've managed to raise more than £100, which is brilliant. If anybody has spare produce they'd like to sell to raise funds for the church, please contact um, Jeanette Street or Jane and Mike Harder because we've run out of stuff. So there's nothing today because we've run out. However, on the 27th of September, we're going to be selling Harvest Home produce. 
at which jam and other homemade items will be on sale. So this is just a trailer. In four weeks, come and see what those exciting other items might be. Now, that's one way to raise money, um, but as you know, our bills are quite a bit more than £100 each week. So, a huge thank you to everyone who is still making an offering to the church. If you would like to make an offering but not sure how to do it, um, go to the website. You can sign up to the regular direct debit uh, parish giving scheme so you don't even notice the money going out of your account. Or if you want to make an occasional donation, just click on the uh, Just Giving button. You can send us a cheque in the post. May, please make the cheques out to Hornchurch PCC. If you make it out to anything else, it upsets the bank. And if you want to go old school, there is a offering basket by the exit over there, the north door. So let's give thanks to God for all he's given us. Lord, you are always so generous to us. Help us to be generous to each other. We thank you for all we receive. Help us to use it wisely to make your kingdom grow here on earth. Amen. Now, as you know, we normally end with a bit of a psalm, and today's psalm is Psalm 26. Now, I found it a bit of a tricky song because the person who wrote it seems to be boasting about what a blameless life they live. But it sort of, well, it definitely does because it's supposed to. It ties in with what Carol was talking about. And my study Bible told me what that should be because I didn't know what Carol was going to say. Um, but it points out in the notes that this blameless life comes because the author trusts in God. Only with God's help can they go against the trends of this world. So I'm just going to read the first three verses. Vindicate me, Lord, for I have led a blameless life. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and my mind, for I have always been mindful of your unfailing love and have lived in reliance on your faithfulness. And that's exactly what Carol was saying about needing Jesus to help us get back onto that altar when we want to give our lives to God. Before the blessing, um, the usual announcement Please wait until someone shows you to the exit so we don't end up with um, congestion. Um, I'm going to make my way out first and then the stewards will start to open, uh, sorry, empty the church uh, from the back. I have got my keys this time so I won't get locked out like I did last time. And we do thank you as always for your patience because I know the people at the front have to wait quite a while. So the blessing. May the love of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen. Amen.